Can we talk about the Vision Pro? Yeah, I did want to talk about the Vision Pro really quick. I don't actually know that much about it, like at all. I I don't know. I don't normally follow tech news um, because a lot of it is bullshit. Though obviously, from time to time, something interesting does happen. I wanted to see. I, I don't even know what it is. The only thing that I know about the Vision Pro is that it's kind of like an yeah, it's an AR headset, right? It's meant to like interact with the physical world and. Do, do like pop-ups or something? Here, I want to see. This is the Apple ad, which came out just eight days ago. It cost $3,500. It's, as I understand it, it's a pretty impressive piece of technology. TOS? You think they would TOS an ad? Apple ads are TOS? Really? That's so dumb! Okay, one second. Like, wouldn't they want people sharing? Okay. I actually love this thing. I love this thing. Not because it's flawless or anything. It is far from flawless. But despite my eyes being inches from these screens, I can interact with the real world around me, pick things up and look at them. Developers are also kind of still trying to figure out what to do with the 3D space in their own apps, or even if it makes sense to do anything at all beyond the normal iPad app. But okay, so this is constructing a fake space that you, you build stuff around. I think I saw a clip on Twitter that looked pretty cool. One second. Vision. Let me see if I can find the clip that I saw because that was, um, is this it? Uh, I'll show you a couple more things. Got the messages. Here we go. This is the thing that I saw that I thought was interesting. Again, got music set up here. Big screen TV set up on my wall. Gordon Ramsay showing me how to cook above the stove. Notes right here for some groceries. Can walk around freely. Here's what it looks like when it's on. Hey, how's it going? Oh, hey, catch. Thank you. And as we walk around the house, everything stays pinned exactly where we left it. And that's it. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, I'll show you a couple more things. Got the messages again. I think that there are... I think there are a lot of things that people will use this for that are dumb, but the technology is pretty impressive. I can see there being a big benefit to like being able to simulate a 3D space and organize stuff. There are probably a lot of jobs that would benefit from this massively. The first thing that I'm thinking of is interior decorating and engineering, where you can construct an interior 3D space and like organize it and uh, put stuff up in it and get a feel for what you're working with. Or like, imagine if uh, people who are doing anything that like architecture or engineering, where everyone has headsets that have like a shared library of, of AR assets where you can like mark out things or sort of like, I don't know, I, there could probably be some really cool uses for this. If nothing else, I think the tech is cool. And the more it gets developed, the more the price will drop. Right? I mean, that's good. Uh, it seems like a pretty logical breakthrough in technology. We've been talking about stuff like this for ages. Has anyone watched, what's the one anime I'm thinking of? It's a classic. Uh, uh, it's, there's a bunch of like kids solving tech ghost mysteries in a sleepy town in Japan, and they have those goggles that let them see the AR guys. Uh, I'll wait till one of you. Denu Coil, Denu Coil, yeah. I, I remember liking watching that when I was younger. VR has been developing for years. This is uh, was like the first real milestone IMO. Yeah, this seems like a pretty big jump forward, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of fields where this could really work. I wonder. What about like firemen training? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Like, what if you had like simulations that you could do where... It, 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 hmm, I don't know. I It would be difficult to do any of this stuff. I just... I, I feel like there have to be ways that you could intelligently apply... Surgical training could be one, yeah, to an extent. There's a lot of stuff that could work really well. Is it, dumb question, is it waterproof? Can it be submerged? Probably not, right? There's no way something this fancy tech-wise could be submerged in water. Probably not. Um, okay, gotcha. Just wondering. Driving training, you know, something a little more. I don't know. I, I kind of like it, though. Hate to say this, but the Oculus Quest has had some of these features for years. Well, you know what Apple likes to do, right? Take existing technology, polish it up, make it more user-friendly, sell it for three times the price. So in the process of this being developed, yeah, classroom test stuff, but only the wealthiest schools would have this for, for classrooms, of course. You know, even if the price comes down, we, we know how it is. 
that is not true. The low latency pass through is a huge achievement. Ah, that's right. That's right. Because here, hold on. That's the reason why they do this thing in the video, right? He, he looks at himself in the mirror here. Hold on. He looks at himself in the mirror, right? And then he talks to his wife, my wife, and the wife tosses him a ball, which he catches. I think I remember reading that the pass through time on this is 17 milliseconds, which is insanely low. And the point of that is that like you're interacting with the real world in basically real time at 12 milliseconds. God damn, that is really low. Yeah, you're you're like they've hyper optimized the pass through so that the world you're looking at, like the pass through time is a significant fraction of real life human reaction time. So it, it, there's not much like lag in terms of what you're really seeing. That's pretty neat. Lag would be really nauseating. This is really snappy. Exactly. Yeah, because if there's even a little bit of lag. Huh. This is the first pass through headset that's actually viable in the real world. Yeah, that's that's the impression I'm getting. I'm seeing videos of people like walking around in it. Let me let me find another video. Hold on. Because that's that's so that's so interesting. Using the Apple Vision Pro, what it's actually like. Are there recorded videos? Right. Sorry about the noise. Can I see what it looks like to walk around? But I want to see like Apple Vision Pro. I want I want to see like what it looks like. Here's Brent Rivera. This looks pretty annoying, I'll say. A guided tour of Apple Vision Pro. Things no one will say about Apple Vision Pro. Hello, Apple Vision Pro. Maxing out the Vision Pro lab limit test. Is this the person we just looked at? It is. That's the same person. I spent 24 hours wearing Apple Vision Pro's headset. Okay, Wall Street Journal, take it away. You've heard all about it. Apple Fresh off the bat of arguing uh, that um, it's bad for workers to get higher minimum wage in California. Apple's vision stand in. She's so dirty, Joe. Ew. <laughs> Especially when I put it in burn. Internet access. People have been linking that too. Um, Apple Vision Pro, not the new frontier for masturbatory technology after all. You you understand how effective gooners are at, like, fronting technological developments? No gooning. In a Reddit post on the Oculus Not Safe for Work subreddit, one user asked if anyone had, quote, figured out porn on the Vision Pro, dying to get this to work, haha. If anyone has a success story, please let me know. $3,500 chastity belt. Ah, clown emojis. Oh, man. Because the Apple Vision Pro allows you to use web browsers and place them virtually in the real world, you can still navigate to Pornhub and watch as many regular or flat porn videos as you'd like. But VR porn, which is often shot and viewable at 180 degrees, cannot play in the Apple Vision Pro. Something VR porn... Okay, okay, so it's not... So they block it for the VR porn stuff. Do they block it for the VR porn stuff? Or is it that that feature only works for these sites? The VR stuff. It's because Apple doesn't allow porn apps in the App Store. Okay, so the VR thing is exclusively through an app front. Gotcha, gotcha. But like Twitter is an app, right? I mean, and it has video. Want like a no Windows up now? <laughs> like what? That's Do wild. I look like real. Yeah, I mean, your eyes are close. Your it's too much teeth, I think. I don't know. Um, Terrifying. I'm review. Come help me. All right, sounds good. All right, meet you downstairs at five. All right. Skip to the section where he's inside the deli. Okay, Chatter, I trust you. The idea of spatial computing, it doesn't make sense to me when I'm sitting in my office. I've got multiple screens. But right now, I'm like in the city. I'm in the middle of Times Square. I've got my virtual keyboard here. I've got Apple TV there. I got YouTube Safari's open here, and it all kind of works <laughs> like this. Yeah, my I guess my first thought when I see stuff like this, everyone's going to like. The first thought a lot of people are going to have is to go like, "Oh wow, this is dystopian." But I'm smarter than you, right? 
So my first thought is, yeah, this is the kind of dystopian. I don't know. I feel like we've already been suffering massively in the public commons because the presence of a phone allows people to dive into their own world rather than engage with what's around them. People are meeting fewer people. People are making fewer friends. People are having fewer partners. Like every element of social interaction outside has been reduced through the availability and convenience of a phone. Not only because the phone distracts you from doing that, but because the phone keeps other people from wanting to do it with you. And this is like a hyped up version of this. Bosch, to be fair, people said this about the newspaper. Yeah, but to be fair, they were probably right to an extent. Though obviously a phone is far more of a distraction than a newspaper. You can't really walk and newspaper read the same way. You can, like there's, it's a degree of significance, but they were probably right. Like th this has been an ongoing problem. People are less social than ever. Tesla owners told not to wear Apple virtual reality headsets while driving. 1984. No VR porn, no uh, Apple virtual reality while driving. It's f***ed up. F***ed up. The goggles didn't work for him while he's commuting where you'd want to use them. Yeah, apparently as a safety feature, these goggles don't work when you're moving fast enough that it could be that you're driving. Like, because you don't want to do that when you're driving, so you can't do it on the subway because that's driving speeds or higher or lower. I don't know. Depends on the subway. Okay, so I this is a bit, right? Because this shouldn't work at all when they're moving. Mark yourself as a passenger, but there's a disclaimer saying they take no responsibility. Ah, okay, okay. This, what I've got going on right now, this is wild. It's impossible for me to imagine that you can't see what I can see. Everything seems so real, and then I can just stand up. I guess my main worry to this is that as this becomes cheaper and more available, this is obviously super convenient, but anyone wearing this might as well be dead to the world. You cannot see their eyes, so you basically can't interact with them. Um, they're in their own world, right? They, they, they're they listening, they're watching, you have no clue. At least with like a Bluetooth or a phone, you can see if a person has a Bluetooth piece in or has a phone on. If they're if a person's not looking at their phone, you can probably talk to them or like earbuds in. But this is like that times a hundred. In theory, it projects their eyes through the headset. That does not in any way comfort me, just to let you know. No copyright arena. Jesse, done it. Thank you. Next guest. Next guest. Next guest. Next I know this is a bit, but stuff like this makes me really worried, man. People are detached enough from the public commons as it is. I don't know. The butterfly is eating my donut. I know he's doing a bit for the video. I'm not like impugning him directly. Pocketing is about to be a much more viable career. Yeah, because uh, anyone wearing this both has their perception cut to nil and has a lot of money. You're right. <laughs> That's the easiest mark imaginable. We're going to see a return to wallet the chains. for this video was to run around New York City wearing these because I thought that would be funny. I think it was funny. But something happened. Something happened today that was completely unexpected. And that something... I don't think anyone else has really touched on. None of the reviews I've seen or read, none of them really uh, put to words what I experienced. So when you take these off, they kind of go to sleep like your phone. And when you put them back on, you have to unlock them. They scan your eyeballs and then to start screen recording, go through the, it takes a second. So rather than doing that, I just left these on the entire day. Um, the like two and a half hour battery pack, you can plug into a fatter battery. So I never ran out of battery power. And after a couple of hours of running around the streets of New York, as in not in a controlled environment, 
my brain sort of clicked and it just forgot that I was looking through cameras and screens and it just it, it took what it saw as reality and that is where this this that's where the that profound moment came from and what occurred to me as I was sitting there in Times Square on a bench strangers all around me the real world moving all around me but I had like a big screen up where I was watching a Mr. Beast video. And then over here I had this keyboard that I could interact with. And over here I had my iMessages. And over here I had my Apple TV and then all of my apps. And they're floating in Times Square in the middle of New York City. They're floating there and I'm actually there. And there's actual humans around me. And in that moment, I was like, holy shit, this is it. This is the future of computing that everyone's been promising for like the last 15 years. This is something that like, let me like truly peek into where we're at, where all of this is going. This isn't the, like the future of AR or VR. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think I get the point. Um, yeah. Look, there are, there are a lot of practical applications to this technology. For example, um, I was uh, uh, getting some food downstairs last night and I saw Kanye watching a video that demonstrated how this has a feature that live translates different languages. Like if you don't speak Spanish and someone's speaking Spanish to you, you can get like an interface like UI element over them that live translates what they're saying into English, which is insanely cool. You know, that's awesome. Um, there are There are so many things that this could be useful for. I just worry that it's only going to be not only, I just worry that it'll also further a lot of really destructive antisocial tendencies, you know. Uh, it's not going to be like everyone's walking around with it. That's not going to happen. But this is definitely something that could help a lot with regards to, like, accessibility, disability stuff, you know. That could be pretty cool. Even mental disability stuff, I feel. I don't know. There, there, there are, like, viable avenues that this could be used, you know, I, I guess. Realistically, how much worse can this be than phones socially? Pretty bad, I'd think. Like, remember that cell phones began as a novelty. If this gets cheaper and more available to the point where it gets smaller and people are wearing it pretty much all the time, you know, you're going to be like going to college parties and making passes at the cute girl who you think is cute. You can only see a portion of her face by like sending her a message through your shared AR app. I don't know. Just kind of weird to think of. There's a lot of really cool stuff, but... Mm. Anyway, I brought up Denu Coil because it's, it takes place in a universe where this kind of technology is readily available and it works in people's glasses. It's cute anime. See? This dog is VR only, or AR only. So the dog only exists viewable through these glasses. But it's an independent entity. It's it's just sort of like code that's registered uh, collectively in the scene there, and it's not as first of all. This is a very sad anime, so I guess this isn't even like a positive show of the technology. But here, the important thing is that it just lets you see pre-existing elements of the AR world. It's not like everyone's watching fifteen YouTube videos at once. You know what I mean? But that, I guess that's what it would be used for, right? If you have glasses that are capable of doing this, then of course you'd be watching 15 YouTube videos at once. It's a shared augmented reality. Yeah, I guess I kind of like that idea more, even though in reality, of course, it would be polluted with nonsense in no time. Oh God, AR ads. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that at all. Well, if nothing else, I'm glad that people in chat seem to understand why I'm kind of doomer about this without me even having to explain why. I didn't even describe that much. Me at my own wedding with subway surfers playing in the top left corner so I don't get bored when the uh, priest is reading th reading the, uh, the vows. It could, oh man, if there was a way to get rid of the pollution that you would have in a shared AR space, you could do so much good. Can you imagine, like, a system by which you could annotate or adjust or improve the stuff in your neighborhood? Or, like, leave notes or warnings or comments or reminders or pointers? Like, there's a pothole over here, you know, worry, watch out for this. Hey, I saw that, like, like I don't know. There's, there's so much potential for beauty, and so much of it is gone. It's ruined because of, because of, because it would just get polluted. Yeah, like Dark Souls messages. 
It's called spray paint? Well, of course, yeah, but that's, like, semi-permanent and illegal. I don't know. Imagine getting a virus that steals all your stuff because you caught a QR code in the corner of your eye. I don't think that'll be a, a concern, but fuck it, who knows, maybe it will. I'm reminded of, um... I'm reminded of how uh, they would like pass uh, uh, um, like viruses through the uh, blockchain. Like if you even open something that was sent to you, it could do it. I'm just thinking about it. I don't know. I think I need to reflect on it for a little bit. This could potentially be a really big paradigm shift, technologically speaking. I, I just need some time to think about it, I think.